What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today I'm gonna to be showing you more than 25 tips to improve your battery life on iOS 13. This is easily the most popular question I'm asked on social media and also in real life. People are always asking me, how do I prevent my battery from draining on my iPhone? Or why do I always have to plug my iPhone in? Why isn't my iPhone battery lasting as long as it should? So I'm gonna answer all those questions in this video. I'm gonna be sharing all of the tips and tricks I know so that you can get the most out of your iPhone's battery on iOS 13. And I've tested every single one of these tips I'm going to share with you today on iOS 13 specifically on pretty much every single device. You can see I have all these devices here. I've tested them just to make sure they actually are going to save you battery life on all devices, including the iPhone SE and the iPhone 6S, the two oldest supported devices on iOS 13. All right, we have a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and jump right in. The first tip is one of the most crucial and definitely one that's going to save you a ton of battery life, and that is to disable unnecessary notifications and then customize the actual notifications notifications that you want to receive. So if you go to our settings and go to notifications, you will see here a list of all the applications you have installed. And it also gives you a preview down there of what notifications you actually have set for that specific application. So for instance, you can see the very first application it shows is a game. So you should go through here and first of all, turn off notifications completely for any games you have. You don't need a notification for a game. Sometimes they'll try to send you promos for like, you know, 2 dollars skins or something like that something crazy that you really don't care about those are completely unnecessary and you should turn off notifications completely for every single game however the more important tip here is to limit the notifications you get with applications like social media applications so for instance if i go down here to twitter we can see twitter right here and you can see i've customized the notifications i have set for Twitter. So first of all, you can see I have sounds turned off. I would definitely recommend turning sounds off for pretty much every single application. It's really no point in having a sound if you get it on your lock screen and you also get the badge on your home screen. But I would definitely think about how you actually see your notifications on your device. A lot of times you don't need a notification on your lock screen and also in your notification center and also a banner up top. You really just need one of these three. And a lot of times I won't even have an alert set for social media applications. I will just have a badge so that when I go back to my home screen, I can see I have eight notifications ready for me on Twitter. Now imagine if I got eight different notifications, just sounds coming in, you know, banners coming down and then my notification center, that would drain a ton of battery over the span of a day. So I would definitely recommend either doing just one of these three alerts and turning sounds off and badges on or doing none of the alerts and just having badges on. Now, obviously this doesn't apply for something like messages, you will want to know immediately when you get a text message so you can reply, you want sounds on and things like that. I'm mostly talking about social media applications here. So yeah, limiting the amount of notifications will definitely improve your battery life on iOS 13. Now, if you want to figure out where you get the most notifications from and also where you spend the most time on your phone, if you go into settings and screen time, you're going to find a lot of valuable information here to see where your battery life is going. So first of all, you can see your daily averages. If you go to see all activity and then scroll down, you can see which applications you're using the most and obviously the ones you're using the most are likely the ones that are contributing to your battery draining but if you keep going down you can see your daily pickups and the most important one here is notifications so if you want to see which applications are sending you the most notifications this is where you want to check so that you can limit those notifications coming in so for instance for me bleacher report i don't really need all of these notifications especially not you know a uh, banner or a notification center so i'm just going to do the lock screen and the badge kind of just what i was talking about right there and this is an easy shortcut to get to those notification settings right here you can see every single application that's sending you notifications and you can also use this information to limit the amount of notifications coming in and if we go back you can also set downtime so this is basically a good way to limit yourself from using your phone too much you can also set app limits if you don't want to use like your social media applications for too many hours in a day you could set those which is really nice and there's just a lot of information in here that you can find out about your daily usage by the day by the week you could really get in-depth here and take a look at where your battery is going now if we go all the way back to settings and then to battery and into battery health take a look at your maximum capacity here so this is the iphone 10s max and my battery capacity is at 94 percent which i would say is pretty healthy however if your battery health is below 85 percent 80 to 85 percent it's time to get your battery replaced i would take your device into the apple store or best buy or whoever can replace your battery who's actually authorized by apple and
and get it replaced because if you have a bad battery, none of these tips are gonna help because you just simply need a new battery. Now also in here is a brand new feature called optimized battery charging. And if you read that, to reduce battery aging, iPhone learns from your daily charging routine so it can wait to finish charging past 80% until you need to use it. Now this is a good feature to turn on because basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna learn your charging habits. Your iPhone is going to use machine learning to learn your charging habits, like when you go to sleep, when you charge your phone throughout the day and things like that. And it's gonna charge your phone at a normal speed until it gets up to 80%. So for example, if you plug it in when you're going to sleep, it's gonna charge it up to 80%. And while you're sleeping, it's gonna stay at 80% and slowly make its way to 100% until you're about to wake up. So based on patterns, your iPhone's gonna learn when you wake up, so it's not gonna charge to 100% until just before you wake up. And this is a great way to keep your maximum battery capacity at a high percentage and not wear down your battery over time. Now, one of the biggest new features in iOS 13 is the addition of dark mode. So if you go to our settings, display and brightness, you will see we have the toggle there to turn on dark mode. And when we toggle it on, you can see there it changes the entire interface, the entire look of iOS system wide. And it's not only good for looks, it actually saves you a lot of battery life if you're on an OLED device. So if you have an iPhone 10, iPhone 10s, iPhone 10s Max, or any of the iPhone 11 Pros, Pro or Pro Max, you will actually save a lot of battery life by using dark mode. And the reason being is because your phone is using a lot less pixels. Since black does not use any pixels on an OLED device, you're actually saving a ton of power by not having to actually power those pixels. And I'm gonna quote iFixit right here. They said, if your phone has an OLED display, turning on dark mode is like turning off a bunch of lights in your house and the net power gains add up over time. So that is a great way at looking at dark mode here on an OLED device. Now if you're on like an iPhone 10 R or an iPhone 11 or any device that does not have an OLED display, it has an LCD display. You're not gonna see any power gains from this. However, dark mode still does look really cool. Now, another brand new iOS 13 feature comes inside of the phone settings. So if we go to our settings, go to phone, and we scroll down, you will see that we have a new setting there called silent unknown callers. And if you read below it, it says calls from unknown numbers will be silenced, sent to voicemail, and displayed on the recent list. Incoming calls will continue to ring from people in your contacts, recent outgoing calls, and Siri suggestions. So this is a really great feature because there's nothing that drains battery life more than your phone ringing and vibrating and just showing up all the time, your display always being on while somebody continues to call you, especially if it happens multiple times a day. If you get like a lot of robo calls, a lot of spam calls, you would definitely want to enable this. However, the only downside I have to this is that sometimes you don't know the person that's gonna be calling you. You don't know their phone number. You know, maybe they haven't emailed you or anything. Maybe, you know, serious suggestions can't bring it up. You never called them before, so it's not gonna be in your outgoing list. I don't want it to silence just everybody, especially when I get phone calls from a lot of different people. So there are some downsides to it, but if you don't think you're gonna receive calls like that and you do get a lot of robocalls, this is definitely going to be a nice feature to turn on and it will definitely save you battery life over time. Now, if we go down just a little bit more to our Safari settings right here, another big way to save battery life while web browsing is to use ad blockers. Now, I know, I know I have a website with ads on it and things like that. However, a lot of websites have very draining ads, I wanna say, with a lot of targeting in them, a lot of, it pulls a lot of data from your device and just uses a lot of energy in your phone to display those ads. So if we go to our Safari settings here and scroll all the way down until we see content blockers, go ahead and tap on that and make sure to turn that on. And then you wanna scroll up until you get to general and then content blockers right there. And this is where it's gonna show the applications you have installed to disable ads. And these are the two that I recommend. I will have links to both of these down in the description below. They are both free. I actually, I believe ad block is $1.99 and one blocker is free. These will block most of the ads on pretty much every website. And again, the reason for this is because ads actually make web pages not only load slower, but the tracking within the ads themselves takes energy from your device and will drain battery. Now, if we go back to our settings and go to display and brightness, scroll down and you will see auto lock right here. I want you guys to either turn this to five minutes or never. So not only is it annoying when you're in the middle of an article, you know, reading that article and then your phone dims down and turns off because you had auto lock on the default 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, even three minutes. Your phone actually took some energy to not only dim the device, but also turn the device on. And when you have to unlock it and completely go back into your phone, that takes a lot of energy from your phone. So that's why I recommend either doing five minutes or never because it always takes less battery life 
to just keep your phone on all the time instead of locking it and unlocking it and going back to what you're doing or constantly dimming the screen. Now, if we go back to our settings and go to sounds and haptics, you guys should probably turn off vibrate completely. So both on ring and on silent. Now at the very least, at least turn off vibrate on ring. If you have vibrate on silent on, I get it. Maybe you don't, you know, have your device always near you. You want to be able to hear when somebody's calling or you have it in your pocket. You want to be able to feel when somebody's calling. I get that. But the motor inside of your iPhone, when it vibrates definitely takes up a lot of battery life and if you have an apple watch you already get the vibrations on your watch so i would definitely turn off vibrate for both of these if you do have an apple watch if not at the minimum turn off vibrate on ring the next thing you guys should do is completely disable push and fetch for your mail so if you get a lot of emails like me you don't need to have your email constantly being fetched and push to you. So go into settings, go to passwords and accounts, and then you will see all your emails right there. Then go to fetch new data, and you wanna make sure that push is turned off. And then you have fetch right here, which it says the schedule below is used when push is off or for applications which do not support push for battery battery life, fetch less frequently and less frequently in our case is going to be never so turn this on manual you don't want your phone always fetching for new data every hour every 30 minutes every 15 minutes and definitely not automatically because that means every single time you get something new it will fetch it uh, so definitely turn this on manual that way when you go into the mail application and refresh you will see all your emails but no other time there's nothing that makes me cringe more than when I hear a person with an iPhone constantly getting the sound for emails coming in because I just know in my mind how much battery that's draining not only because the notification sounds but also because I know what's going on in the background and I know how much energy that's using up in their iPhone now the next one is a very simple one and that is to avoid extreme temperatures when using your iPhone so if you're at the beach put your phone in a bag with like a towel on top of it so it doesn't get hot and overheat that's definitely going to affect the actual battery the lithium-ion battery inside of your device you'll probably also get an alert on your phone saying that it needs to cool down before you can use it that's definitely an alert that you never want to see because that's that means that your battery is being affected and you probably will notice a drop in your battery health inside of settings and this also goes for if you live up north definitely keep your phone in your coat or just keep it warm when you are in extreme cold conditions now the next tip is to not use fast chargers or wireless chargers all the time only use them when you actually need them because using a fast charger or a wireless charger just creates extra heat and it will definitely wear down the battery faster on your device so I know how convenient it is is to use a wireless charger but don't do it all the time especially don't use it when you're going to sleep don't put that on the wireless charger every night before you go to sleep because that will wear down the lithium ion battery in your device the next tip is to limit your location services so if you go into our settings go down to privacy location services you do want to make sure you have location services on just so you can track your phone with find my iphone and things like that but you want to go in here and just customize what you want to be using your location all of the time a lot of times i will have this set to just while using because that way it's not using my location in the background or anything like that but it is needed for when i'm actually like using it so for example like the camera i like to be able to see where i took a picture so i do like having location services turned on for that now something like chick-fil-a i don't need that to be always on so i'm going to change that to while using the application so you need to go through this list and just customize what uses your location and think about if you need it to always be on or just while while you're using the application or just off in general and if we scroll all the way down to system services you can also turn off some things in here like location-based alerts location-based ads location-based suggestions you could turn all three of those off they are just going to use battery life and use your location and then down here for product improvement I would disable all of these as well now significant locations is a pretty cool feature but it does use a lot of battery life and it tracks you everywhere you go so if you don't want that you can disable it now the next tip is to use Wi-Fi at all times if possible so LTE, when you use LTE, it definitely uses up more energy and battery life than if you were connected to Wi-Fi. So if you have Wi-Fi available anywhere you go, even if it's a public place, I would use Wi-Fi just because it takes up a lot less battery than using your cell signal. Now, just a pro tip, if you are going to be using public Wi-Fi, definitely make sure you do have a VPN installed. You can see the toggle for VPN right there. That's just to make sure that all of your data and all of your web browsing is secure. The next tip is to find your battery killers yourself. So if you go into settings, go to battery, battery you will see a graph populate here once you wait a little bit you can see it shows your battery level and it shows you a graph and you can actually take a look at this and see you know right
right here. My battery was dropping off a little bit. Let me go ahead and take a look at what I was using during that specific time that led to my battery draining a little bit. So you can get very specific with this with both of these charts right here. You could tap on it by the hour. It shows what you're using at that specific time. And this is a great way to pinpoint exactly what's using the most battery life on your device. And you could take that into account to know, you know, maybe I should do this or maybe I shouldn't do this to preserve battery life. It's just really good data to know and understand. So I would definitely take a look at this because it is different for every single person. And I would recommend looking at the last 10 days as well. So you could see your activity and what was using the most battery life during those last 10 days on average. And while we're in the battery settings, you will see low power mode up top. So low power mode is definitely something you should use only when you actually need it. So don't use low power mode all the time. It will definitely help you save some battery, but I would only use that when you're like at 20% or less. And you can see there it says low power mode temporarily reduces background activity like downloads and mail fetch until you can fully charge your iPhone. So it is a great way to save battery life, but only when you use it when you need it. Now, if we go back to our settings and go to Siri and search, you should turn off all of these Siri suggestions just because they do tend to take up a lot of battery life and a lot of resources when you actually pull down, like when you go right here, Normally, if you have that enabled, you will see some serious suggestions. I think it's just a waste. Uh, and you know, unless you really find it useful, I would turn all of these off because they do take a lot of power and battery life on your iPhone. Now, another thing to consider is turning off, hey, you know what? You can see it there at the top. I would consider turning that off only because if you have it on, it will always be listening to you. And if you turn it off, it won't accidentally get triggered when you say something that you know it thinks was, hey, you know what? The only reason I keep mine enabled is because I do have a smart home, so I do like to tell Siri to do certain things. But if you don't use that feature, I would definitely turn it off. The next tip is to disable automatic software updates. So if you go to settings, general software updates, make sure that automatic updates is toggled to off. You don't want your phone just randomly starting to download software updates because obviously that does take up battery life and it takes up storage space and you could actually accidentally upgrade your phone overnight when you don't want to. Now going back to our settings, display and brightness, you want to make sure that raise to wake is turned off. So this is a feature that wakes your screen up when you just do like this, when you start looking at it, when you raise it from the ground or from, you know, when it's sitting on on a desk or something like that. This takes up battery because you don't always necessarily want to raise or wake your screen when you raise it. And that does use power because it does illuminate the screen and it takes you to the lock screen. And then you just have to turn it off lock your screen if you didn't really want to do that and it does take up battery life so I would turn off race to wake unless it is a feature that you have 100% accuracy for the only time you ever pick your phone up is when you want to wake your phone up which I doubt that's most of you guys so I would turn that off now the next tip is to not kill your applications I've said this numerous times over the past like 10 years here on my channel but do not close out of applications to save battery life it actually does the opposite because when you close out of an application the next time you go to open it up it takes more power and more resources to open that application back up. It does no good. The iPhone is really good at RAM management and it will actually suspend applications in the background. So you do not need to even think about closing out of applications unless you have like a bug in the application or it's not working. That's the only time you should be closing out of applications. Now, the next tip is to monitor your widget usage over here. So a lot of times the widgets will actually connect to the internet. Like for instance, here I have the ESPN widget that uses battery life because it has to connect to the internet to show those scores. Same with my steps app here a lot of these things actually use battery life to pull up so what I would do is go down here to edit and disable any of them that you don't really find too much use for that you don't use on a constant basis that could be draining your battery now another age-old battery saving tip is airplane mode airplane mode is definitely a very effective way to save battery life but only when you use it effectively I would use this only when you have like no signal obviously when you're flying I would definitely turn on airplane mode just so it's not constantly trying to connect to like cell towers or to Wi-Fi or anything like that. Airplane mode is a great way to save battery life. The next tip is to charge your phone whenever you can, whenever it's convenient, because you're gonna thank yourself later when you can't charge your phone and you're on like 1% battery life. So I see this all the time. A lot of people won't charge their phone until they get to like 20% battery remaining or even less. That does not make any sense. If you're at 91%, that means you have 9% battery you can be gaining. So I would just charge your phone whenever it's convenient. And the final tip is going to be the music equalizer. So if you go to settings, music, and then down to EQ, having our EQ off means that we're not gonna be using any more power to add like a layer of equalization over the music we're listening to. So this of course is a minor one and it's probably not gonna make a major difference, but it is one final thing I wanted to mention that could be contributing to battery life draining on your iPhone. So 
anyways, guys, there you have it. Those are over 25 tips and tricks for getting the most out of your battery life on iOS 13. So if you guys found this video useful, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and also subscribe by clicking the subscribe button down below. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you soon.